This, this is an Alaska mirror. Both of these what? players are here from Alaska. Uh, not, I don't know for sure if they, they're friends or not, but uh, Josh is a 22 years retired Army infantry from Wasilla, and he just got back into the game this fall. He's had cards sitting in his closet for 10 years, but he last played Magic and Dissension uh, and is looking to get back into it and decided, uh, you know, death and taxes. This would be a great time. He still had all those wastelands in his closet. Why not put them to good use? <laughs> uh, and then Genesis is from Anchorage, Alaska. He, he doesn't really play in many large events and has no high finishes, but, uh, you know, was looking to, you know, have, uh, have some fun playing with uh, this four-color Le Leobold deck. Uh, yeah, I wonder if it's worn down here. Uh, <laughs> Josh seems to be wasteland flooded. He has a wasteland in his graveyard, in his battlefield, and in his hand. And uh, Genesis has three fetch lands. So playing around these wastelands beautifully. Well, here comes uh, Thalia. And that's going to uh, put a little bit of a crimp on Genesis's uh, ability to play his spells. Oh, he hasn't played any yet. So <laughs> whether, well, maybe he has, they're really expensive. whether he has none to play or just hasn't found uh, an opportunity to do so. Genesis did start this game on six cards. Okay. So, uh, you know, might have just kept a hand that had a lot of, you know, had operating mana and not much else. The label deck uh, does not mind being on six cards. Uh, there's so much intrinsic value in its cards that just so you know, from down on the floor, we hear that humans was named with that cavern of souls for Josh Nessler. Not soldiers. Humans, not soldiers. Humans. All right, Guardian of Thraben gets into the battlefield, into the red zone. Both players just kind of uh, playing and going, right? Not a lot of action yet. Logacy is often about pivotal turns of interaction. Ooh, there's a Rishid and Port. Love that card. Josh so seems to have no basics. So, so uh, Death and Tax is sort of somewhat of a mana denial deck. Mana Denial and Taxing Deck, uh, as, as the name does imply. We're going to make your spells cost more, make you have less lands, and if you do have lands, uh, we'll tap them down. Normally in the upkeep, sometimes there's some interesting interactions. Maybe we will see... Maybe we will see Josh Rashad and Port a fetch land to wasteland it. Ooh, Ooh that would be very exciting. Yeah, you but see three fetch lands in play for Genesis because he doesn't want to just fetch up a dual land that'll feed the wastelands. Yeah, I, wonder, I, I do wonder what's in Genesis' his hand. Sometimes you, you, you'd see a ponder or a brainstorm, anything. Uh, these lands would be kept in hand so that they could be shuffled back into the library and, and, and just become brand new wonderful cards. It look like a handful of swords to plowshares there for Josh Nestler. I see at least two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this I mean, currently this looks to favor, favor Josh if, if you have a 2-1 against a 1-2 and your 2-1 is first strike. Yeah, well, he's lining things up. It looks like we are going to see that Rashid and Port play. Uh, you know, I thought that might be a, a good tactic, but with so many lands on Genesis' side, it's just, why, why bother? Yeah, and Genesis has all the men he could ever need in the game of Legacy here. Yeah, access to five. You can hard cast force it. Well, I guess not with Alia out. All right, we see, see a Snapcaster Mage. I see another blue card at the back of his hand there. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, different from Four Color Delver, which does not get to play any basics most of the time. Uh, the, the, the label deck sometimes gets to play basics, even though being four colors, it, it might be a little... A little uh, greedy. Oh, there you see Island Swamp. And now uh, Genesis sacrificing another one. Does he have a forest as well? No. Okay. Out of basics, possibly just those two? Maybe. Maybe. One of the common play patterns, not, maybe not common, but one, one play pattern in Legacy that you might want to do if you're in Genesis' situation, when you have many lands, sometimes you intentionally fetch or play a dual land, non-basic, so that your opponent, you induce your opponent into wastelanding it. Well, here we see a four mana spell coming up. And it's Colin, well, everything's going to cost one more with uh, yeah. the Thraben, uh, the Guardian of Thraben there. So you see Colgan's command, he's paying four mana for it. He removed right. a land from Josh Nestler's yeah, graveyard. The, the wasteland from turn yeah. one, yep. And so uh, he is doing uh, two damage to uh, Thalia. Thalia and then uh, looking to make Josh discard a card. It does appear what's happening. This is an end step. Uh, Josh's end step, I believe. Yep. 
Just choosing what to discard here. We can't see what that card was. Possibly a Swords to Plowshares. <laughs> I know we have a uh, deck list that we can take a look at. Tell me tell me uh, if there's anything interesting going on here for either Nestle or Genesis that, that sure. we should keep an eye out for. Let me uh, get a quick perusal. The thing is, it's so quiet in this part of the venue, you can actually hear the shuffling of the deck lists. With access to basically every Planeswalker ever made, Genesis chooses... One of the newer Planeswalkers, Liliana, The Last Hope. Oh, interesting. Hmm. And now, is that a nod to the really good, cheap creatures in this format, like Young Pyromancer and Delver of Secrets, so you can just, like, shoot them down with uh, Liliana, The Last Hope? Yeah, markedly, Liliana of The Last Hope is much better than Liliana of the Veil against something like Young Pyromancer. Uh, All right, here's another Deathrite Shaman for... Genesis, <laughs> and now he's going to start attacking with that one. One to attack with, one to drain with. Living the drain. Living the drain. That is... Even by your standards, Rich. <laughs> even by my legacies. Yeah. <laughs> have to wait until uh, Sunday. Uh, sorry, sorry. Josh has chosen to include a Sword of Fire and Ice in his main deck, as well as the Umazawa's Jit and the Batter Skull. And Sword of Fire and Ice, again... A nod towards those Delver decks. Pretty hard for them to uh, block a creature with protection from blue and red. Death Red Shaman does a wonderful job of doing that, being neither blue nor red. Not the best blocker in the world, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so another wow. copy of Thalia. The third Thalia. Important question in chat. Volodine99 asks, who is homeboy in the booth with the jazz voice? I'm not sure. That could be any of us. Brian David Marshall, I believe. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard you. Jazz, <laughs> jazz voice. <laughs> the homeboy in the booth with the jazz voice. I want a t-shirt for you with that on. Oh, jazz voice. I've never heard that. So now two Richardson ports for Josh. Island and Swamp are Genesis's only basics. And he's still sitting there on that misty rainforest staring it down against uh, that wasteland. Yeah, multiple reasons. Uh, he doesn't want to fetch anything that's going to get destroyed, and if he does end up finding a brainstorm, the ability to shuffle some chaff back into his deck, maybe, uh, for instance, any counterspell right here is probably not doing its job with ca Cavern of Souls out. Uh, shuffle days back in, for instance. All right, so Thalia attacks, and two, uh, and Genesis just takes it. Shuffles his death right shamans around, lets them feel frisky for a <laughs> second. But like you said, they're they're not very good blockers. Certainly not against the first striker. Could theoretically trade one for one, but then if the classic double block, yeah. And with no white mana out uh, on Josh's side of the battlefield, that actually might not be a bad play. There's no harm. There's no uh, no harm of getting swords in response or anything. I wonder how the white no white producing. Spell lands for Josh is, is really hindering his development here. Yeah, and jo I mean, Josh is a deck that's really not looking to necessarily pay mana for its spell. It's certainly not its creature spells. Generally looking to uh, rely on something like Aether Vial. Absolutely. Aether Vial, which he's not been able to find yet. Uh, he, he, not every creature in Josh's deck is a human, so while he can cast Mother of Runes and Thalia right now, uh, something for fl like Flick of Wisp, for instance, is, is uncastable. All right, so here we see Brainstorm in response to a uh, Wasteland activation here on that Volcanic Island. Two mana for Brainstorm. Seems like a fair deal. How much Do you think Brainstorm would still get played <laughs> at two mana? Absolutely. Absolutely. Would you get paid at three? Would you play it at three? How much would you pay for a Brainstorm is the question. <laughs> Let us know, Chad. See, this is, this is a legacy crowd in chat, so I reckon the answer here is going to be one. <laughs> one. One. <laughs> Why would you ever pay more than one? Well, because it could be a Thalia in play. Uh-huh. Thalia in play. Sphere of resistance in play. Two max. I'd pay three. We're paying four in modern right now. <laughs> ten. <laughs> ten mana. 
three mana brainstorms probably too much. Three point five. Now we're getting the math people in. All right, all right. You've got an applied math masters, is I that right? I do, I do. Yeah. I was a teacher for a while. Huh. We see a Caracas here. Caracas is a great combo with Thalia. Uh, gives it protection essentially. Anytime Genesis would choose to destroy the Thalia, we can uh, bounce the Thalia back with the Caracas and then replay it. There we go. Caracas on the screen, getting a legendary creature back to owner's hand. And that works for either. It doesn't have to be your legendary creature. No, yeah. So uh, if Josh were to face a Grizzlebrand and Emrakul, you have nice land that defends against those options. One of the cooler plays in Legacy is when the Show and Tell player casts Show and Tell, and they put in Emrakul, and you put in Caracas, and you just stare at them, and you're like, <laughs> nice 15-15, put it back, buddy. Did I imagine things or did a carpet just appear on screen? Oh, no. It was a hat. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry about mm. that. Headgear's important in Alaska. Aha! Uh -huh, of course. Good point. You mentioned both of these players are, are from Alaska, right? Yeah. Yeah. And both are wearing hats. So now we see a sword supply shares taking down one of the death rate shamans. Yeah, this is Josh's first chance to, to cast a spell that is white, that isn't a creature. And yeah, attacked by his own Thalia. The secondary ability of Caracas. <laughs> <laughs> At white mana. <laughs> of course, Josh going for the Ice Age sword supply shares there. Oh, I'm sorry. If I put the wrong one up, I have, haven't I? All right, let me let me find you an Ice Age For the one. longest time, uh, <laughs> sword supply shares was Probably the hallmark removal spell of, of Legacy. Okay. Uh, Swords of Postures and Lightning Bolt, maybe. And then along came a little bird called Fatal Push, uh, really catapulting these Delver decks into playing black instead of red. Or white, even. Yeah, fa Fatal Push, a card that's just seen extensive play in every single, uh, in every single format, you know, all the way to, a, to vintage. Absolutely. Uh, just a fine card in, in standard. No, not not overly powerful or anything, and then such a huge impact on modern and legacy this card has had. All right, there's Liliana, the last hope. Uh, we talked about this card a little bit before, and now you see where it can really shine. It's going to take out this Thalia while uh, ticking up its loyalty. Yeah, on the, on the, in the window of Josh having tapped his Caracas, which we talked about how that would protect his Thalia, he is, uh, Genesis is able to find a window to resolve and use the Liliana. Yeah, I, I really like Liliana the Last Hope in this format. It seems like it it's a really sweet uh, top of your curve <laughs> kind of yeah, spell. Yeah, yeah. Genesis does have Jace the Mind Sculptor as well, but but this is uh, definitely it's not something that I think has been super played. I think Liliana the Veil was certainly more common uh, up until maybe even this year. This is going to be very difficult for Josh to deal with. Most of Josh's creatures have one toughness. Mother of Runes, Flicker Whisk, Frexian Revoker, Recruiter of the Guard, Spare of the Labyrinth, Dahlia. <laughs> uh, in fact, there are one, two, three. There are only four different creatures in his deck that don't die to it. You know, we might actually see a situation where Josh has to Flicker Wisp uh, Liliana just to keep it from ultimating. Uh, one of his one toughness creatures that would be a solution to this problem is Frexian Revoker. Uh, yes, that's one toughness, but as it comes down, it would name Liliana the Last Hope. I'm sure Genesis has a bevy of other removal spells to handle such a thing. We, we actually also see a Stoneforge Mystic in hand for uh, Josh Nestler. Yeah, Stoneforge uh, has not been castled up to this point because it is a core artificer, I believe, not a human, which is the what the cavern is on. Uh, but now he has the opportunity to do so if he so chooses. Liliana can't really profitably interact with Stoneforge Mystic. So maybe we can get her batter skull on. Looks like Josh was getting some ruling from the judge there. Something about Liliana. Yeah, again, it's not necessarily a new card in like years it's been printed. It's a, it's a few years old, but it is, I think, a new card to Legacy. Well, and it, and it may be a new card to Josh. We talked about the fact that he's coming back to the game after quite an absence and dug his favorite cards out of his closet you know, that had been sitting there for 10 years. So... You know, Liliana might be a card that's uh, in his uh, blind spot. Very true. A lot of people in chat um, are concerned, maybe a, a good word, in the way that the Richard and Ports don't seem to be tapping very often 
to do its secondary ability, which is kind of its primary ability, namely tapping something down. But chat, just think how excited you're going to get when he finally <sighs> does it. <laughs> the fourth Thalia. Wow. Yeah, he's just... Yeah, up to now, Josh has had some struggle developing, and Genesis also has not been doing a ton with his mana, so there hasn't been a ton of reason. And, al and also, G Genesis had the two death rate shamans up until recently, mm -hmm. which gave him access to whatever man he need. Now, now there you see the Caracas returning Thalia in response to Liliana activation. Yeah, it was wonderful uh, sequencing by Genesis. Just uh, get that off the battlefield. He knew that was going to happen, just so he could start resolving his uh, one mana cantrips without being taxed. Yeah, so there's a there's a ponder. And the reason you see Josh not porting specifically on this turn is to leave open that Caracas for this interaction. So didn't like what he saw, shuffled him, shuffled everything away, draws a fresh card. And passes the turn back to Josh. Yeah, Josh is oh sorry, Garcia's really looking for something like Leovold, uh Maybe Jace the Mind Sculptor, just to some, something, some, a clock, you know? All right, well, there's another Plains, or First Plains, another White Source, though, Basic plains, for nice. Josh Nessler. This will unlock Flicker Wisp and Mirror Crusader. It'll unlock Sanctum Prelate if he has it. Not, there, I do see a Flicker Wisp. Not really a lot to do with it right now, though. Well, I mean, you can hold your Flicker Wisp until Liliana's sort of teetering on ultimate. And then reset it. Yes, yeah. that's wonderful. Uh, optimally, you'd have a Aether Vial in play and be able to flicker things at instant speed. All right, but Stoneforge Mystic, one of the uh, pillars of this deck. Yeah, probably one of the main reasons this deck exists is Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge Mystic, huge, huge impacts in Legacy. Uh, optimally with Batter Skull and Uma's Always Jit, and then whatever, as we mentioned earlier, Sword of the metagame you'd like to play. <laughs> and now you see uh, Josh waiting patiently for Genesis to decide whether or not this is a card he wants to use. Force of Will, another one of the... Uh, and he does. He's going to discard a Snapcaster Mage. Yeah. Wow! To pay the alternate casting cost on Force of Will. Loses one life, but counters that spell, which is something that was going to be very difficult for him to deal with with Liliana. Force of Will uh, is certainly not very good against Death and Taxes, but one of the cards that is Death and Taxes straightforward two-for-ones is Stoneforge Mystic, and if you're going to get a two-for-one one way, you might as well two-for-one yourself to prevent that. So question for chat. Assuming that we don't manipulate the feature matches to make this happen or make it not happen, will we see a Force of Will played in every round of the Legacy GP <laughs> this weekend? <laughs> yes or no? Yes, no, oh. in chat, will we see a Force of Will every round? Okay, so here we see uh, Josh has replayed his Thalia. Uh, Genesis used Liliana to try to kill it, and when Josh responded with Caracas, Genesis had a Diabolic Edict. Yeah, imagine an invisible stack here of uh, a, a minus two, minus one, then a Caracas, then a, then a Diabolic Edict in response to make sure we took care of that fourth Thalia for good. Fourth Thalia is down. You've got to feel pretty good about that. Yeah, well, he has enough mana sources that he's not too concerned, but it does... It does Bring him down to like one spell a turn, which is, is you know, not really what four code Leopold wants to be doing. So here's Mother of Runes. And that's uh, also yeah. very vulnerable to the, to the uh, Liliana. Now, why, why do you keep playing creatures out here if you're Josh? Well, if you, he were to play two creatures in one turn, which is what I expect he's going to do, one of them won't die <laughs> to uh, Liliana, and he'll actually be able to untap with one of them. Uh, I, I think his only other creature in hand, if, if, if I can read his hand right, is uh, Flicker Whiff. So okay. I think he's going to do the plan you said, which is Liliana's getting close. Let's reset it so we don't have to worry about it for a couple more turns. Yep, and that's what ultimate. he does. So Flicker Whiff removes Liliana, and then it comes back at the end of the turn. Josh certainly is not happy to be doing this, right? Like, yeah. His creatures are dying. They're still playing Walker on the battlefield. He's not challenging it well. Um, maybe if he gets to untap with... Maybe his thought is, I get to untap with either Mother Runes or Flicker Wisp. If it's Mother Runes, I get to protect my future creatures from this interaction. If it's Flicker Wisp, I get to pressure. No, that has so many sickness. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Alas, no. Yeah, he's like, no, your Mother Runes can uh, not tap yet to use her ability. And we see Snapcaster Mage on Diabolic Edict to get both of Josh's wow. creatures. 
Great job there by Genesis managing, uh, continuing to manage his board. And now he's back to the Liliana plan. I mean, I, I expect that that might very well be how he wins this game. Yeah, Genesis is looking very good right now. Um, Josh has a, only two cards left in hand. It looks like one of them's a source of plowshares, shares. even. I think. He's got Richard and Ports. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's got the, the harbor on lockdown. Uh, definitely, definitely looking for someone to play boat brew against him. <laughs> Is, is that the old red-white mid-range deck from, yeah, yeah. from like extended years ago? Was I it, was, it, was, it was standard. Yeah, yeah, it was Brian Kowal. Siege Gang Commander? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That was right when I started uh, getting back into Magic. All right. So Swords of Plowshares is going to take out the Snapcaster Mage. Genesis will gain a little bit of life back there. And certainly that is... I wonder if he actually meant to do, wanted to do the Death Rite Shaman. Uh, Snapcaster Mage, a classic two for one. You're going to lose a card. Um, but the Death Rite Shaman was maybe, maybe a more of a threat right now. Oh. Okay, all right. Oh, here's, here's a Mirren Crusader. Wow. Mirren Crusader off the Cavern of Souls. Okay. Uh, protection from Black, so we don't have to worry about Liliana. Uh, Diablock Edict is exiled. We don't have to worry about that. Wow. I was about to ask this whether Mirren Crusader was human, but then I did a little bit of flavor checking in my mind and went, wasn't that with against Phyrexia? And, mm, prob <laughs> probably then. Probably. Wow. This is really, uh, this is a huge. This is a big turn of events, yeah. Huge Gen turn of events here for Josh Nestler. Genesis has, for my count, three cards left in his deck that can kill it. One Lightning Bolt, one Diabolic Edict. And one at Toxic Deluge, which is the, the classic. Uh, uh, my how, about <laughs> how about Snapcaster Mage? He's going to be digging for one of these cards. Okay. He doesn't have any more removal spells in his, in his discard pile that can handle this Mirror Crusader. So he's going to ponder there. You see a Force of Will. Could not quite make it. I think it's a land, the third one. Okay. Think. Uh, but yes. they're all going away. So, so Genesis has those three answers, and then also Jace the Mind Sculptor to return it to oh, Josh's okay. hand. So he has answers, but he's on a three-turn clock here. Uh, but he can uh, he can also, he's going to lose his Liliana Genesis to uh, to the Crusader. Yeah, it, it would probably be... Chump blocked by the Snapcaster Mage for a turn. I think so. Um, he has not plussed his Liliana yet, right? So it's not even a clean hit, like kill hit. If he right. does, so, so Josh does have to make a like do some math here. Like, what turn is this going to ultimate? How much does it matter? Is it better just to put him on a Genesis on a, a three-turn clock? Will he find a tropical island to gain two life, which throws off the clock? Um, all these things are going through Josh's mind and his attack step next turn. And so, when you say finding a tropical island to gain two life, can you explain what that means for people who might not know? For sure, Deathrite Shaman. Uh, the, the deck is called Four Color Leovold for a reason. Uh, one is Leovold itself is three colors, and you want to run red. And the other is Deathrite Shaman. Technically, is two colors, and it's one of many modes will uh, gain Genesis two life if you choose to exile a creature from either graveyard. And you could do that a, a bevy of times. There, are a lot of creatures have died for for. Uh, Thalia's, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> for example. All right, we see another Mother of Runes has uh, been drawn here by Josh Nessler. So I think he has a Flicker Wisp as well. And if that is the case, I would just attack Genesis's face. So I would reset the Liliana at some point. doesn't have to be right now. Um, but I wouldn't be very fearful. Yeah, Genesis's hand is... Brainstorm, thought, sees, force of will. And it's always one of those uncomfortable situations where you really kind of want to brainstorm and look for some new cards. He had shuffled with the ponder, so the top of his deck is unknown. But you also don't want to take that blue card out of your hand because you want to be able to cast force of will. Force of will on anything that's super scary. Um, and a second thought, sees, wow. So with, um, yeah, we're going to get the Snapcaster Mage back and prop. Oh, using one of the minus ability, the minus ability uh, would, on the Liliana. I would have maybe liked to see the brainstorm put the two thought seizes back, and then mill those because we don't really care about those anymore. I don't think. Uh, that way they're out of the way. We get our Snapcaster Mage back still, and we have some fresh cards. All right. Well, here's Snapcaster Mage. Targeting. We have a ponder. Oh, we're gonna do. He's brainstorm. got a brainstorm. Yeah. So really playing from his graveyard here. Uh, is that three more lands? One of which is a tropical island. So the clock uh, that Josh is presenting 
a three turn clock, it, it's going to turn into something more. Uh, Genesis will be able to gain four life over the course of this turn, five, six life. It definitely alter the clock by a couple turns. So there you see he put two Thought Seasons on top of his library. Now he's going to be able to shuffle those away Perfect. with Polluted Delta. One and this of is the hallmarks of Brainstorm play in, in the Legacy format. Yeah, uh, sometimes, uh, especially in Miracles, Brainstorm is akin to Ancestral Recall. Ooh. Uh, shuffling lands back into your deck is essentially the same as drawing three fresh new cards. And then and Miracles, putting a Miracle on top of your deck is like getting a fourth card of value. Public service announcement. Some people asking in chat, so what happens with the clock running down? We're down to 22 minutes in the round. Uh, how does the round play out if they don't get to play the full two or three games? Well, if they run out of time, plus five extra turns, uh, which is the, the sort of tie-break little bit at the end of the round, with someone 1-0 up, that player will win the round 1-0. If it's 1-1 when they finish their extra turns. That will be a draw. Each player will get one point rather than the winner getting three and the loser none. Um, and if they are in the middle of the third game and it's at 1-1, they won't finish it out. Whatever the life scores are is irrelevant. That will be a 1-1 draw. It is certainly possible that we will not see three full games here. How often do you see that happening in Legacy where, where the matches do go to time? It does happen. It's less so now that we've, as you, we've mentioned earlier, Vance Hansen is <laughs> dividing top. But it is... Not too infrequent. Um, uh, this matchup, th this particular game has been, uh, there's a rough start, right? Both players had a very slow start. That's not too common. Uh, I, I, we, you said one player was on a mulligan. Um, so we're going to see a force of will here. And he's going to discard counterspell to pay the alternate casting cost on force of will to keep Baleful Strix in hand. Yeah, jo Josh trying to use his swords to the best of their ability, uh, trying to reduce the clock with them, and uh, Genesis says, nope, this is worth the counterspell. I want to keep the clock the worth same. Th worth two counterspells. It is worth two counterspells. Well, the Baleful Strix, uh, you know, drawing a card is just so such a beautiful line of text, right? You, you don't want to get rid of that. <laughs> All right, he finds his... Th the I'm not sure how many tropical islands he has he here. Has one in, he has one in hand. I think he has two. There are two total, so he doesn't, you, you know, be, need to be scared of Wasteland a little bit. There's... One left in Josh's deck. I think he used he's got one. He's got the other one in hand too. Okay, perfect. So he, he's got enough to gain a couple points of life here. And now he's going to use Liliana. We're getting Snapcaster back another, again to get another Snapcaster back. And he's really just all, all the cards he wants are spells, and so milling milling uh, with Liliana and be able to get those cards back with uh, Snapcaster Mage, the the, de the Deluge if he can find it, the uh, Diabolic Edict, the the Lightning Bolt. Uh, these are the cards he needs right now. Or if you could ever find Jace the Mind Sculpt, that'd be helpful too. <laughs> yeah. We use Jace to actually just bounce that Mirror and Crusader, which he would do gladly. Has protection against. <gasps> we did it. Did you see it? Did we you did see it, the Jace. We found it. Man, you know, uh, there's some amount of impartiality here. Not just <laughs> you're, you're 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 showing your team Jace very clearly here as a former Miracles mm -hmm. player. I'm also excited for Josh. <laughs> When he played the Mirror and Crusader, we were all very happy that he found something to do. <laughs> found something to do. It's like it, you're implying it's like housework. Are there lands to exile? You not bet, not you from Josh's are. deck, but Genesis still has plenty in his. In his, He's been working off of uh, Josh's graveyard. And there is Jace the Mind Sculptor. The greatest of all. Better than all, I oh, think, as no, Patrick bad, Chapin would say. It's been so long since. Yeah, and since now, it's been Mirror and Crusader is going to get bounced to Josh's hand. And uh, eventually Genesis will need a solution like a, a final solution to this this uh, this card, but he for now is content bouncing it over and over and over again. And I think he will do this every turn. Uh, he might have to. If, if he doesn't do it, what what is the other option? Then it then then Mirror Crusader just attacks the Jace and it's dead anyway. So Yeah, and he's gonna need to find uh, some way ultimately to deal with that mirror and crusader but this this will certainly buy him a lot of time a lot of time for natural draw steps maybe on the last turn that jace would die to the bounce like he'll spend his last little to counter two bounce then we use that turn to brainstorm and look for one of these uh various an actual answers left in the deck josh has a lot of options now. i think he just drew aether vial maybe 
Now, how good is Aether Vial at this late stage of the game? Is it still a relevant card? It is still a relevant card. I would have been re much more relevant 45 turns ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was a recruiter of the guard that he drew, not, oh, okay. not a, not a uh, Aether Vial. And th the reason that Josh's turn is taking a, a little bit longer is with the recruiter of the guard, he, he is just trying to figure out what card in his deck he would like to search up this turn. So recruiter of the guard is going to let him search his library. The, the white imperial recruiter, as it were. Toughness. Toughness to us. <laughs> Answering Josh's question as he, <laughs> I think he leaned over to read, read his own card. I believe that's true. Yeah, like, uh, so, yeah, the... Shows him oh, oh, Phyrexian oh. Revoker. I saw a Phyrexian Revoker, yes. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you do with the Phyrexian Revoker? So do you name Liliana here? I... <laughs> I guess, well, you have to name Liliana yeah. first. Right, right, that's the starting point, surely. Mm -hmm. So, Genesis, one line of play he has is he can use Jace to bounce the Revoker, then plus Liliana to destroy the uh, Recruiter and just keep this going. Oh. Uh, he did not. Did he yeah. not name Liliana? Very quickly, Genesis pointed to Liliana and said, I will destroy your yeah. Revoker. Yep, okay. Okay. So he must have named Jace. And, uh, yeah, Genesis free to brainstorm this turn. Wow. That's it's crazy. So you see him putting some cards he doesn't like back. Yeah. My Gets to fetch those away. Plays an his, four his I think, fourth death rate shaman. That is a lot of death rate shamans. Does he have uh, all of his mana producing lands out yet? One, two. Uh, I, I don't know how many have been destroyed by Wasteland, but I would assume that Genesis is getting very slim on mana producing fetchable lands. Uh, that the Scalding Tarn could find, but I think he'd be content just shuffling his deck. <laughs> there is a third Rashidun port for Josh Nestler. Why don't we take port a look at those and we'll see what they do. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to bring up the Mercadian Mass version. Oops. Uh. <laughs> Oops. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do know that's a way to guarantee that I won't, don't you, Dan? I knew that you weren't going. I predicted it. Bit of a contrary. Oh, there we go. We did it. Yeah. Yeah, so Josh is, Josh is I think, fairly locked out here. Uh, two Planeswalkers. Four Planeswalkers, if you count Deathrite Shaman. <laughs> the one mana Planeswalker. Maybe his title should be the, the greatest of all. All right, now we see Josh uh, tapping his mana. Yeah, so... Uh, and he's going to replay the Mirrored Crusader and force Josh to either have a counter spell here or just use a uh, loyalty counter from Jace to bounce it again. With the Cavernous Souls, the counter spell wouldn't go oh, yeah. as well as Genesis had hoped. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Not about Cavern. But I, I assume Genesis doesn't care about counter spells anymore. He's just shuffling them away, probably. And then, uh, yeah, we're forced back into the Jace bounce mode until Genesis finds one of his permanent answers to this card. Well. What's going on here? Oh, uh, looks like we're doing some end stepping. Snapcaster Mage tapping a lot of mana. Oh. Oh. Well, he's gonna. But did, that doesn't did, work. Did, there's a cavern. What's That's going on? that actually doesn't work. Can't be countered because he used Cavern of Souls. It looks like it, right? Oh, we're figuring it out. We did yep. it. Yep. So, so you can still cast the yeah, counter okay. spell. Yeah. It's just it won't counter it. Uh, but it will do nothing. Oh. Uh, so yeah, that's a shame. He, he we actually saw Force of Will get played. Play, play Played for its alternate casting cost of five mana. Do you mean its alternate casting cost of seven mana? Of seven <laughs> mana. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> with, with Snapcaster Mage. I didn't think you were allowed to cast things that cost seven yeah. in Legacy. Well, when the game has gone on for 35 minutes, you might get there. Yeah. Well, Cloud Coast casts seven mana spells all the time. All right. Well, there's a Mother of Runes. And There's just now it just becomes like, which creatures do I kill first? For Genesis, the answer is always Mother of Runes. <laughs> yeah, re regardless of, of you know the, the Snapcaster Mage, I, I think Genesis is still in good shape. He, he's got plenty of resources, a uh, chump block available. Um, if he wants this turn, he can spend it brainstorming again. He's got actual brainstorming in his hand, too. He's also got a Fatal Push in his hand, a card we talked about mm -hmm. a little bit earlier. Returns the Crusader now attacks, offers up the trade Snapcaster Mage for Imperial Guard. Anytime you can trade a Snapcaster Mage for literally anything, you're happy. And he chooses to accept the trade, does Josh. Wow. 
Yeah, it, that, that particular snap catch of fade mage might not have gotten as much value as most, but uh, plenty happy to do so. I believe we might have found... No, I, I thought it might have been the fourth port. <laughs> <laughs> he did put it where he would, you would likely think he'd put his fourth port. So yeah, we still have Mirren Crusader, and I believe it's a Flicker Wisp in Josh's hand. The tendency to, to flicker the cards is high. So now, Flicker Wisp, not a card he wants to use at this point. No, he could increase the number of counters on Jace if he'd like to, but that seems poor. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I, this is fine. Uh, he'll actually use his last Jace counter on bouncing the Mirror Crusader. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, look at, all right, Genesis is starting to go to work with the Deathrite Shamans yeah. and actually uh, working on Josh Nestor's life total. Removes two swords to plowshares yeah, and takes four. Uh, out of Josh's uh, scorecard. If, if uh, Genesis has enough instants and sorcerers available, on Genesis' next turn, he has lethal. If uh, Josh does not gain life, or Genesis does not somehow die. And there's, uh, a, oh, there's Leovold. Way to make your there's appearance. Colligan's command. All these heavy hitters coming out on uh, the pen, what I believe Rich would call the penultimate turn. If my prediction is correct. Certainly seems that way, right? I mean, that's... Genesis looking to keep the cards that make him not lose. Uh, whatever those may be, he's trying to figure out uh, how, how do I make sure that I, these Deathrite Shamans survive uh, and that I can use them on Josh's next end step and my next main phase. And it keeps whittling away with the Baleful Strix. If you ain't blocking, you attacking. <laughs> There's a third mm. uh, Deathrite Shaman. And now he's going to ponder. He knows what the first two cards are. One of the cards that Josh could have that would, um, I suppose, prevent Genesis from winning would be like something like a, a source of plow shares on one of these Deathrite Shamans to get rid of that clock. Uh, is this a Jace Brainstorm? This is a Jace Brainstorm, right? So he's leaving Josh with his... No, air. it was a Ponder. Oh, it is a Ponder. Thank you. Yeah, it was a Ponder. So you still have Jace available. Uh, I... I think I would bounce the Mirror Crusader just in case I don't have a counterspell and he somehow resolves like Umazawi's Jet. Uh, uh, I suppose <laughs> we do have the Kologans command for that, though. So then now we see uh, Genesis. Really, Liliana has looked great in his deck. And I mean, it has done everything. It's returned Snapcaster Mage three different times now. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't expect to see this much utility out of, out of Liliana. I'm actually impressed and surprised. Uh, the amount of times that the Snapcaster Mage is, maybe this particular <laughs> Snapcaster Mage has been rebought and casted another spell. Is, is, like you said, three times, I think? Yeah, it certainly feels that way. So here comes Snapcaster Mage. And look, he's leaving these two underground seas open because they are the cards we need. And, and I think he's just going to target Brainstorm, but not actually cast it. You can, you can give that card flashback for the entire turn. You don't need to cast it right then. As many players just do out of, you know, habit. So you, you would be shocked to see him not just go for the drain you for four, untap, yeah. and kill you. Yeah, I, just with the just with target the brainstorm challenge. out of posterity, and, and <laughs> maybe he'll even remove his brainstorm yeah. that has flashback. <laughs> 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 but no, he chooses hey, some other cards. He exiles two force of wills. That's going to drop Josh Nestler to three. <sighs> and the writing is likely on the wall here. <laughs> the but there's under the ten excitement. minutes left. This is this has been a long road to get here. <laughs> To win game it, one it, it, for Genesis Garcia. And honestly, Duff and Taxes is a deck that can uh, steal a very quick game, too. Yeah, I would say that uh, Josh is poised to win a fast game, and, and Genesis is likely not. But that's fine if you're Genesis. All he has to do is not to lose game two. And that might affect his sideboarding. You know, there's just huh. enough, enough defensive answers. Uh, he, he won't, like, this game took him... How long to win? He doesn't need to do that. Oh, here, Josh is going to buy himself an extra turn here Sorging by his own sorging his own uh, Mirren Crusader. Now, that does only gain him two life, and there's a third Deathrite Shaman available. Yeah, and I think <laughs> he comes to the conclusion that he's just forcing... Uh, you know, at that point, you're just attempting to invoke uh, Carpal Tunnel Syndrome on your <laughs> opponent, you know, out of vengeance, make them tap an extra creature. So now, yeah, interesting game. And again, to me, the, the big story of that... Uh, was uh, Liliana the last hope? Yeah, the one of Liliana that almost looks like a fun of did more work than 
I think any of us expected. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide the commentary team up here. Uh, Dan's going to take a look at deck list for a couple of minutes, as the players are, and work out what he thinks might be going on with sideboarding. Meanwhile, Brian David Marshall and I are going to play a little game of trivia. Okay. So um, I'm going to ask you a question, and chat, you can play along at, at home. The answer is A, B, or C. Okay. And the question is, what is the shortest unit of time? So what is, what is the quickest of these three? Is it A, a nanosecond? Is it B, a picosecond? Or is it C, the distance between, God, I'm so excited to watch Legacy, and oh my God, that turn one is abysmal. I would never do that in a million <laughs> years. Who are these people? It is absolutely C. <laughs> do you know, you are correct. <laughs> you are watching MTG launch here from Grand Prix Seattle, not one, not two, but three days of magic action and fashion tips. Um, and uh, <laughs> right now, you are watching Genesis Garcia. I just, I have to get a message down to the feature match area just to ask him to look into the camera and wave so that we can have a Genesis wave. It, it, needs, it needs to be done. I, I've stopped myself from seeing Genesis wave three times now. Have you really? <laughs> I think the, so. The one I tried to avoid was Invisible Touch and Land of Confusion. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is a uh, little Phil little Collins. British. It is nice, very good. Nice. I like you more and more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the sideboard, I think that we can expect probably Genesis to gain a little bit of advantage here. We've got some Marsh casualties, giving minus one or minus two to Josh's team. We've got some Engineer explosives taking up. Taking out a slew of uh, Genesis's, uh, sorry, Josh's permanents, uh, and Colagons, an extra Colagons command will shock some of the smaller creatures and disenchant some of his equipment. Uh, and then a standard All Star, a Braid, doing basically the same thing as Colagons command would do, either taking out creatures, destroying equipment, <laughs> either either taking out a Stone Forge or taking out the card of Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, from Josh's side, he gets to, if he'd like to, upgrade some of his Source of Plowshares into Council's Judgment. That'll handle true, uh, true Nemesis if it were to exist. Uh, we've uh, also the Jace that But is also lets him take care of like a Planeswalker, which gave him fits in this match. Yeah, he didn't have a solid answer to... His normal answer to Planeswalkers is uh, Phyrexian Revoker. And just with two out, what do you choose? You choose Jace or you choose Liana, and the other one's going to answer the, the uh, Phyrexian Revoker. You can upgrade some of his threats and diversify a little bit. He's got an Elspeth Knight's Errant and a Gideon Ally of Zendikar. So if he feels that Genesis is answering creatures too easily, he can go in that direction. And then uh, if you get in real... From the last game, one thing you'd expect is, like, J Genesis's graveyard was pivotal to his success, right? We saw him rebuy Snapcaster Mage over, over three times. Uh, there's a couple rest in pieces in Josh's side, what he might oh. want. Uh, re rest in peace, you think of it as a card that's fair for Dredge, but it's really... It, that card is excellent against Snapcaster decks. Yeah, with Deathrite Shaman, Snapcaster Mage, and Liliana, the Last Hope, plus Colagon's Command, maybe that's enough cards to justify bringing it in. Normally, I dislike that. I only want that against what it's printed for, right? I want it against just Graveyard decks, Dredge decks, Reanimator decks. But maybe maybe the, the beating Liliana put on him last game is enough to bring it in. All right, so you're watching MTG Launch. It's Rich Hagen alongside Brian David Marshall, the Pro Toy Historian, and Dan Musser from Inside R&D, part of the play design team. Uh, so great to have Dan along with us. Later on today, you'll have Marshall Sutcliffe and Reed Duke, one of the great legacy experts. We were so excited when we knew that he was willing to not play in this event, but instead bring all his legacy expertise to all of us here in the booth and you at home. So looking forward I to lots of that. I did see Reed yesterday watching people play legacy with a little single <laughs> solitary <laughs> tear running down his cheek. May have ha may have some regrets about it as he gets to watch people play. Reed won a, a Legacy Grand Prix last year with Leovold, right? I believe yeah, there true. is Ether Vile. So this is a much better start for Josh Nestle. This is what you're looking to do when you sign up to play Death and Taxes. Yeah, Gen Genesis would love to force a will this. Uh, also, Genesis, one of the tactics you, you do against Death and Taxes is you, you don't really keep in force of wills. Counter spells are just usually heinous against Death and Taxes for the reason of Aether Vial. That is like the only spell you'd like to counter, in fact. And now there's Caracas. There's Thalia. And we're going to actually see Josh get to play a little magic in the early turns here. This Good. Absolutely the start he needs to get to a game three. And the question is whether, oh, but there you see that a braid in hand. 
for Genesis Garcia. That can take out the Aether Vile. He's going to need another mana to do it. I see more and more Legacy decks playing this abrade. It usually is a one of, and, uh, funnily enough, in, in their sideboards. And we have a... Uh, yeah, jo Josh basically exactly what he needs. One, uh, the Aether Vile on one, a two drop on two, plus he's got the Mother Runes in his hand. Uh, will come on the end step, the best time. A two mana Ponder. <laughs> Fair price to pay. Now, would you play Ponder at two, at two mana? I mean, and we've established that Brainstorm at two mana is fine. What about Ponder at two mana? Would you in play in that legacy in Legacy? Oh, in Legacy. That's a much harder... It's a much harder call. So I was I was slow when I played Mirror because I was slow to adopt the ponder, the ponder uh, mentality. So maybe I wouldn't. <laughs> Someone in chat said they'd uh, never seen one of the uh, the masterpiece Ether Vials on coverage. So uh, now you have. All right. So Mother of Runes comes down at the end of turn with that Ether Vial, and now it is online. We saw Mother of Runes hit play earlier and not be able to do anything because it just died immediately but now uh thanks to ether vial we get to see this actually get an untap step yeah uh activating ether vial on the unstep getting an instant speed mother runes essentially is exactly the speed you'd want to cast it only two mana here it looks like josh might be a little crimped uh, on his mana stop the match please um let's have the match stopped apparently the volcanic island was fetched up with a verdant catacombs chad is saying so let's just get that held please uh so uh, we're making that happen, everyone. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so if we can explain down onto the floor that that's what happened. Verdant Catacombs, there we are. We're seeing that. Yep. Thanks, everyone in chat. Accurate. Uh, to let you know, chat, the way it works, um, it, because of the rules enforcement level on day one, we can respond instantly to you like that and just have the match stop because we're all spectators. Uh, and at the rules enforcement level on day one of a Grand Prix, spectators are allowed to hold a match and say, I've just seen something that shouldn't be happening. Uh, day two, it's a little more complicated. We have to go through a judge and explain to them the situation before the match can be stopped. Uh, but on day one, you say, hey, wrong fetch, and we get it fixed. Um, so I'm, curi I'm curious being dealt what with. the penalty will be here. Yeah, jo Genesis probably would like Volcanic Island, but I think a Underground Sea would do acceptably here. Both players are getting warnings here. Okay. But it is too far along for them to fix this. Right. So no backup. So no backup. So the, right. the Volcanic Island is going to stay in play. Hmm. That, that is unfortunate. I, I don't... With the Tropical Island, he could have sequenced his land in such a way that he could cast this and still uh, fetch up a, a bad land to cast. There's an Aether Sworn Cannonist. Agreed. Responsible on his for main phase. Responsible okay. for more magic online bug reports that are erroneous than almost any other card. Is it really? <laughs> I, well, we have we have some people on our mail list at home. <laughs> We're like, I don't understand why this happened. This didn't work on oh, Magic I can't Online. Cast my spell. And it was like, uh, was there an Aether Sworn Cannonist in play? <laughs> 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 That's awesome. All the stars are here this weekend. We've just uh, had a, a meet and greet with Maria Bartholdi, who's uh, not on coverage this weekend, uh, hanging out, meeting lots of fans uh, from Magic the Amateur, of course, so many people from Wizards of the Coast here. They're just up the road in Renton, Washington, about 25 minutes away from the convention center. So a ton of the, the big stars from within the building, like Dan Musser from oh uh, Play Design, for example. So He's a braid, uh, one day. three mana, a braid takes down the Aether Vial. Yeah, it shows that Mother Rooms can't protect that. No. Uh, f f oh, Josh is getting, getting uh, busy. He's getting s s s you know, saucy here. Wow. Oh, there, and there's the rest in peace we discussed earlier. Yeah, I thought that might happen. I, I thought it might not happen because Josh has to end this game quickly. He might not have time for stuff like that. Okay, so some other stuff that's going on down on the floor. There's a two minute time extension, uh, but there's also been a slow play warning which means that if things uh, go to extra turns, there will be seven turns. Right, rather than the customary five. Rather than five, five yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, a fairly rare occurrence. All right. Leovold, Emissary of Trent, has come down. Trest. Trest. And, and, and Leovold... Uh, there it is. Pretty good here, blocking all these creatures, but also there's a Caracas. Uh, Josh, if he wants to give Genesis a card, right. he can <laughs> just bounce that right back into his hand and just have plenty of cards. Uh, what's one more, you know? 
Just let your opponent draw cards. It's no big deal. Get, uh, you know, you need to attack. Do it. You gotta end this game. Well, again, you know, neither player can play more than one spell per turn because of that cannonist. Well, you play an Aether Vial and another spell. <laughs> if he so chooses. Oh, though, that's true. Though it'll cost two. Right. Yeah, this Aether Sworn Cannonist is an interesting card to bring in. I did not I did not expect this to come in. Maybe there's a thought of I just need uh, some early aggressive two drops and uh, a Grizzly Bear will do. Grizzly Bear, the, the code for a 2-2 two -two for two mana with essentially no ability. So Mother of Runes is going to give Thalia protection here. And we're going to aggressively use Mother of Runes to swing in. Wow. Okay. All right. Really, really don't want to give uh, Gar uh, Garcia another card, does Josh? Ooh. He's tapping his rest in peace. I, uh, I don't know what, what just happened I here. Don't, I don't think that works by a lot. Y yeah. Uh, there's a Thalia in place, so the card actually costs six, and he <laughs> only has four <laughs> lands. Okay. So that's... The That's pressure, interesting. The pressure of being on camera. It, it can, it can be and trying to play fast, and we've just been told that they're in turns. Okay. Yeah, they are in turns, so this is going to be seven additional turns here. Uh, this is turn one right now. This is, uh, this is like a puzzling. Genesis has the puzzle of how do I not die in seven turns. Right. Really, just with up a game, he just has to stay alive to win this match. So yeah, so he's got one point in the bank for sure. Yes. And then it's can he get the extra two by not dying over these seven so turns. So plays a Balfour Strix. Which, which is an artifact. Way, which is an yeah. artifact, yes. You can play a second spell this turn. His mana is uh, fairly atrocious here. All right, so another two mana ponder. He'd, he'd love to play the second Balfour Strix in his hand, but with double Volcanic Island... And only one black source. It is not possible. He, he literally may have wanted a Badlands with that fetch instead of the accidental Volcanic Island. Doesn't like what he sees with that Ponder. Chooses to yeah, he's going to shuffle everything away. So he's going to get a fresh card off the top. What, what is he looking for at this point? Uh, maybe one of his cyborg cards and engineered explosives would do. A uh, Toxic Deluge would do. Oh, that would be a nice one. Uh, some, something to just... All right, so turn two. Extend the game as long as possible. So can Josh finish this game off? I would be surprised if Genesis ever attacked this game. Well, yeah, no, no need for him to. He's not. He doesn't actually have to kill his opponent to win. And again, the aggro mother of runes. This is like my mom. Do you think uh, he chose protection from black or blue? <laughs> he let his opponent choose. There's a second mm -hmm. copy of mother of runes. And we're on to turn three. In terms of eight life, he'll, uh, Josh will have uh, turn four and six. Two more attack steps. And again, with Caracas, I mean, Josh does have the opportunity to return Leovold if he needs to. Yeah, I thought that might be a good idea without the Bale Strix there, just to waste Genesis mana next turn, get an extra two points of damage in. Uh, again, I think Genesis has tons of cards. Uh, it wasn't really a joke. One extra card, what is it really going to do for Genesis at this point? All right, there's another Baleful Strix. When players see downsides like the, the text box on uh, Leovold, they you know, are really allergic to, to letting their opponent have that, that benefit. And sometimes it's just, sometimes it's just what you got to do. So Toxic they lose definitely what... Genesis is looking forward to make sure, really seal it so he does does not lose this game. But he might just be able to He might just be able to anyway. hold, hold off here. Well, except that Genesis can now get in with two creatures per turn with that second mother of runes. Yeah, the Death Rite Shaman so complicating the clock. Oh, oh, there's no graveyard. Never mind. <laughs> Another black creature. So now, yeah. So Gen Josh gets to attack for four and four. Can win this on uh, turn six. Yeah, this is the exact clock he needs. Protection from black, protection from black. Yeah. Go to combat. He knows Genesis can't cast any spells that cost more than zero mana because of Thalia right here. And just has to get through one more attack step. And you see a Flicker Wisp in hand. Uh, I yeah. think you definitely want to get that down. Uh, so I would use... If I'm not getting that down, I would use the Rashad Port probably on something. 
I'm not sure what land is the best. Probably the Black Source. But if Genesis hasn't interacted with any of his creatures, uh, Josh has given him three different turns on which he could get around Mother of Runes and hasn't interacted on any of them. So this is the turn Genesis needs to find something. Three mana, well, four. He needs four mana for a Toxic Deluge. He has it. He has the life for it. Does he have the actual card? And he does. He does! Wow! <laughs> Basically one of the only outs that Genesis <laughs> even had to the board. All of them. Garbage is running in the streets. Now, would you have attacked with your creatures that are going to die first? I probably would have just for... <laughs> <laughs> to send the message, right? Yeah. <laughs> the plague that moves with the clouds. Wow, and he's going to get to... Uh, to pay two life, going down to two. Can what, Josh only gets one more attack step. What's Top. happening here? He's choosing what to bounce with Caracas. Is it Leovold? Is it... Uh, because Genesis all... Oh. So it looks like he only chose one, kept his Deathrite Shaman alive, kept his Interesting. Uh, Leovold alive. It also keeps the Aether Swan Cannonist alive. And then Josh uh, had the opportunity to uh, bounce his <laughs> Thalia. But he's no longer going to uh, be able to use Mother Runes to force uh, any damage through. Yeah, so a land plus a Sword of Fire and Ice wouldn't even do it. Um, a land plus a Jit would not do it. So I think um. Genesis has managed to weather the storm here. Pretty good opening draw from Joss Nessler, but it looks like the next turn is turn seven, and yep. that's the last turn of the game, and Genesis will win this match well, there's one, one game to nothing. I assume he doesn't have it, but there's one card Josh could have, and it's Elspeth Knight's Errant. Oh, he could... Plus three, plus three, and flying to x one Canonist would end Josh's life in a way he did not expect, oh. but Genesis's life. Apologies. Nope, but what he has is Flicker Wisp. He flickers Leovold, attacks with the Aether Sworn Cannonist. Burt Lock. <laughs> Death Rite Shaman shows off a fourth ability, <laughs> jump blocking. Genesis did not draw his extra car, but that's, you know, he's okay. He's okay with that. Yeah, and this is turn seven, and... Uh, Handshake coming right up. should be the game. Yeah, how do you... <laughs> How do you choose to end the game when it's turn seven? Do you, do you say go? Do you cast a flurry of spells? I, I generally just say you go. say go? Just enjoying a little bit of extra camera time. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's fair to say that the port is a lot more active in Seattle than um, in the gameplay. I think wow. we can and there's the Snapcaster that. Mage. In Genesis the extends right. the hand. Joss Nessler uh, can't quite, comes up just short there of being able to win game two and get the draw. Genesis Garcia, who won a very, very long game one on the back of Liliana the Last Hope. Really surprising card that looked Excellent. If you're wondering why the rest in peace was brought in out of the sideboard, it was for that Liliana. Uh, pretty, pretty.